In series five, the younger son became known as the prodigal son because he took all that he had and he wasted everything through careless living. Amen. Have you taken all that belongs to you from God? Are you wasting your body, wasting your spirit, wasting your soul? I want you to join me in this study as we considered the sixth series on the prodigious father and the prodigal son. You have a prodigious father who is ready to take you back and turn you away from becoming a prodigal son to be someone who will enjoy his abundance in life. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. We ask that you open up your word unto us by your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. As I said, this is our sixth on this series on the prodigious father and the prodigal son. And today we're going to be focusing, you know, on verses 15 and 16, you know, of Luke chapter 15. Amen. Praise God. Now, in the previous series, we we're able to establish, you know, that this son's, this younger son's situation or the prodigal son's situation became pathetic, you know, after he left home. He wasted all that he had, all that he collected from the father, all his of his inheritance, wasted everything to careless living. And, you know, his situation could best be described as falling from grace to grass. Amen. He that had servants, you know, under him, when he was under his father, now became himself a servant. In fact, up to the level of becoming a slave. Praise God. And, you see, because he didn't realize that when he was under the father, he was enjoying, he was well off. And that happens in life. Sometimes you think that the situation that you are now is worse off until you encounter a situation that is much more difficult than, than, than that which you are going through now. And so the devil succeeded, you know, in luring this younger son from the authority and the covering, you know, of his father. Amen. And I hope as you are listening that your situation is not as that of this younger son, that the devil succeeded in luring him out. But just in case Satan has succeeded in luring you from the authority and the covering of God directly or from the authority and covering of your spiritual leaders, I pray that God will restore you and bring you under the covering of God again in the name of Jesus. Praise God. So the devil succeeded in luring, you know, this younger son, the prodigal son, from the covering of his father. The same devil succeeded in luring Eve, you know, from the covering of God when he deceitfully lured her to eat of the forbidden fruit, you know, by telling her that, look, God knows that you will be better off if you eat, you know, of this fruit. And she did, and she discovered the devil was lying. It was the same with this younger son. He thought he would be better off, you know, by coming from under the father. And of course, at the end, he discovered that the situation, you know, was quite different. Amen. And so, as I said, he that had hired servants, you know, under his authority and waiting on him now became, and of course, as a son, as a heir, now became someone who himself, you know, became a hired servant, you know, waiting upon others. The situation had turned around in life, not because God wanted him to be so, but by reason of his own choice. He began to do the meanest, you know, and the basis of job. He was feeding swines and even desiring to eat from the crumbs that fell, you know, from the swine. An abomination to the Jews. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. It is interesting. You know, the devil loves to lure God's people away from God by giving them the impression that you are missing something outside. And by the time you go out, you discover that indeed you are missing nothing. In fact, you are worse off you know, being, uh, being outside of the covering of God himself. Praise God. And so this younger son, when the family came, his life condition wasn't to the point that a desire to eat of the crumbs, you know, desire to eat of what was left of the pigs. But he didn't even have this to eat. Nobody gave to him. He was completely abandoned by everyone. He was left on his own. He became a destitute, you know, on the earth. He had been stripped of everything that belonged to him, amen, by the devil. Just as the, just as the man on the way to Jericho, you know, in the, in, the, in the book of Luke chapter 10, you know, beginning from verse 30, was stripped of all that he had by the robbers and was left half dead. That was the situation 
of this young man. He had been stripped of everything. The devil had looted him of everything and left him, you know, half dead. Amen. But for as long as he could think and could calculate, you know, in terms of what to do, how to keep himself going, he could not remember where he was coming from. Amen. He could not. The devil had blocked his memory. The devil has blocked his consciousness, you know, from remembering that back home, he was much better off. And that back home, the father was still there and still had a law. The devil had completely cut him off, cut his memory off, so that he could not remember where he was coming from. He could only remember where he was and began to wallow in poverty, in penury, you know, and in need. Praise God. And because the enemy had blocked his memory, he could not find his way back. He couldn't even think of returning. Even if he wanted to, but it, that idea never came to him, you know, that he could return and that he could go back. The same thing with Adam. The moment, you know, that the devil stripped him of the garment of glory that he had on, that he became naked, he couldn't even think of going back to God. Instead, what he did was, was to clothe himself, you know, with fig leaves. Listen, have you fallen from great height, unable to do the wonderful things that you used to do before? All the exploits you used to do in the name of the Lord, you can't do them anymore. Have you fallen, you know, from that great height so that you cannot find your way back? Have you fallen to the point that you think that God cannot forgive you, that you're wondering, can God forgive me? Can God forgive me? That was the situation of this young man. He had fallen to the point that he couldn't find his way back. Have you disappointed God? Have you disappointed man? You know, and that you're finding it difficult to forgive even yourself. Do you feel that you smell like a pig? That your smell is awesome, your odor is foul, just like that of this young man, this prodigal son, who had been living in the midst of pigs and had been taking care of pigs we don't know for how many years. Do you feel that you have been abandoned by God, abandoned by, by your church leadership, by abandoned if, even by your church members, abandoned by family, abandoned by friends? Do you feel that way? That was the situation of this young man. I want you to join me in the next series where we shall discover how God found this man and brought him back home. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We know that you are a loving father. You're always, you're more than willing to bring us back when we truly turn even unto you. We ask, Lord, that as, as, as you opened up the memory of this, of this prodigal son, as you cause your light to dawn upon him. Let your light dawn upon us and help us to find our way back to you by the power of the Holy Ghost and forgive us and cleanse us. Recover us, O Lord, and bring us into that wonderful relationship and fellowship with you again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Glory to God.